is a walkthrough uh, to help folks understand how polis might work for them. And so we're taking in a, a polis conversation uh, that someone else has set up and started and recruited hundreds of people for. And we'll just kind of walk through the process of how you might arrive at this and, you know, hopefully share how it could be useful. Um, so this, this polis conversation is uh, run by a mobility lab and they're trying to understand uh, new views of public transportation in the post pandemic world. And there's, there's some instructions here about what to do, but since you're like a normal person, you're not gonna, we're not gonna read that at all. And we're just gonna go straight down and try to figure out how this is working and what's happening. Um, hopefully this will make sense. Uh, so the, up top you might, you'll notice like there's a statement here and uh, we're not gonna click on this ourselves, but normally you'd come and the first thing you do is you know, you'd start agreeing or disagreeing or uh, maybe passing if you think it's like a bad question or it's like, doesn't, you know, it's manipulative or you just don't understand it. Um, so you'd click agree, disagree. And then when you do, um, kind of more statements will come up. There's a there's a hundred total you can see here. Um, and you'll kind of go through and just give your gut reaction to like whether you think it's true, you think it's not true, or uh, for whatever reason you have no, you can't have an opinion. Um, and as you're doing that, um, kind of down below, you'll see kind of a blue dot start to move around into different groups. And um, and you might realize, oh, th this blue dot is me and I'm moving into like a blob here. You know, you might be curious and you, you'd click this blob um, and you'd see state things, perhaps a bunch of statements um, that you all uh, like that that you're in agreement with, and you're like, okay, this is my blob, this is my group, um, and and this group here, group C, has 62 people, and uh, and the things that they, you know, as you're clicking through, you see a lot of mentions of uh, bikes and urban growth and uh, walking around and uh, 10 minute neighborhoods, people like. They're strongly agreeing, and you kind of get the story. Oh, these are these are people who believe in they're, they're supporters of public transit. Um, uh, a lot of mentions of equity, social justice, and integration. They're about walking and biking um, and buses. And so, oh, these are people who live in cities and support public transit. And you can kind of build a little like story about them. Um, and so, for these other uh, the other groups, I'll pass um, pass to uh, Divya to like summarize. Uh, gr group A was that yours? Yeah. Um so, you know, group B, we got, a, or sorry, group C, I guess we got a sense from. Um, and group A, similarly, we can see, oh, here are some things that group A might care about a lot, increased supply to reduce density. Um, you know, cars aren't the go-to option anymore as we click through and, and we, we look at, you know, shifting funding priorities away from city centers, maybe to other areas, uh, making sure that cars aren't the priorities, not just in city centers, but in lower density areas, um, fewer flights uh, and things like this. And, and if we look at the next one, um, improving connectivity to local communities or improving connectivity has been to the detriment of local communities. Maybe this is a group of people who live in lower density areas, not in city centers, and have found that public transportation or connectivity has been mostly concentrated in city centers, but you know they're in support of transportation, but want that investment to be more equitable across different regions. So we can kind of get a sense of what that group wants as well. Um, and then we can look at, you know, when we look at B, then we'll get a sense of what differentiates these groups. And, and we can also look at the majority opinion to see, uh, you know, pull us at the end of the day, we also want it to be pulling out lines of consensus. So it's important to see what things are different across these groups. Um, and that's what the group statements are for. But then the majority opinion shows us the, the kinds of things we might be able to push forward on from these conversations um, in terms of where there's agreement. But to get to that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Ben. All right, I'm looking at group B. Group B is a bigger uh, b bigger shape, which I think means that there's a little bit more spread out um, opinions in that group. It's also kind of the contrarian group. If just clicking through these top five statements here, uh, four of the five of them are um, you see a, a red cross out symbol rather than a green check mark. That means that the majority or the plurality of people in group B actually disagree with that statement. And that's kind of what brings group B together is more uh, that they disagree together rather than <laughs> um, support, support uh, statements together. The one statement they do support is 35. Um, which is a l little bit uh, just that public transportation is scary and they're going to keep their private cars. Um, and some of that's in response to COVID. So um, I think that group, group B definitely represents the not just the contrarians, but some skeptics. And it's a, 
it's not the biggest group uh, in terms of numbers of people, but it is a bit more spread out in terms of um, opinion diversity. So group B would be an important group to, to consider whenever uh, consensus building is happening here. I was trying to find if any of their top statements also aligned with a majority opinion. You can see in the majority opinions tab that um, there's some of the top top five statements that have a major majority, I don't want to say consensus, but um, agreement. And none of those are in fact overlap with, with group C's top five. But if, if we did a more detailed report, we'd probably see a longer extension of statements uh, from each of these groups and, and which ones. What I would like to see is what of group C's, um, the consensus within group C, where does that align best with the consensus of the majority? And um, yeah, that would help. I think if you were a policymaker, you're trying to make sense of all this. So there are more more detailed uh, analysis that can be done with the data underlined here. But this is still really useful for a glance, seeing kind of what, what we have. We have clusters. We have kind of three groups have formed organically and what those groups sort of represent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the majority opinion and group C do overlap maybe on statement 52, like Ben was saying. So that could be something to pull out in terms of oh, 52. Good. Where, to, where, to, like, where to take this next um, in terms of further analyses or do you, you know, sometimes polis is used to have face-to-face -face conversations after these where it sets the agenda for those conversations. So maybe this statement is a good one to start with in one of those or something like that. Yeah, like a, a passionate participant who is coming to a conversation like this that runs for, it can run for weeks or months um, and evolve over time. Um, they might, uh, you know, they might kind of take to this and try to understand these other groups because they actually want to, and, and you know, we should have mentioned this perhaps earlier, but there is a way once you've gone through where you can submit your own new statements into this. So it's not just something that the moderator has like decided, you know, the opinions that everyone has is encouraged to to contribute. You can actually, if you if you feel like, oh, there's something important here to this conversation that I'm feeling that is not here, or or that th there's one that's framed, this is like framed poorly and I can do, I can write, I can rewrite this way better. Um, then you can do that and put it in. And you know, if, if your motives are such, you can actually do the work of trying to find like really ever more subtle majority opinions by trying to understand these groups that perhaps you're not in um, and then submitting new statements that others will then vote on. And if you can find those majority opinions, um, then uh, that's often things that you can all move forward with together and with policymakers if they're also participating in the sorts of processes that use these. Um, yeah, is anything else that we should say? Uh, it might be worth adding that um, Polis also generates a report from these. So it's not just the visualizations, but there's a report that kind of drills down deeper into each of the statements and what folks agree and disagree on that uh, we can go over in a, in a subsequent video in terms of how to move from analyzing the, you know, the visualizations to the report and the relationships between them and, and things like that. Great. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Be sure to smash that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs>